ladies and gentlemen thank you for checking out j house radio episode 88 today we're going to be talking about ahsoka the first two episodes that just recently dropped on disney plus um so far i'll just say spoiler alert i'm loving it um other than that we got a few other topics that we're going to jump into tonight it's going to be a little bit of a quicker show because i gotta get up and pay the bills in the morning um other than that los with the infamous starbucks cup what you're drinking yeah. What you're drinking? How you feeling? Uh, How's it going? I'm drinking Casi Cielo. Uh, I wanted to change from Kimono Dragon. Okay. Uh, and I'm just tired as shit. <laughs> I, Bro, feel you. I, I feel remember you. I remember my water heater broke and I got to remodel my whole basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in the middle of doing that. And today and tomorrow I can't work on it. But it's all of Saturday, all of Sunday, Monday when I get home from work, Tuesday when I get home from work, taking a break, mm-hmm. uh, Wednesday, Thursday, if we do a podcast, I'll take a break. Um, if we don't, then I'll work. If we do do the po- uh, podcast on Thursday, then I'm going to work on Wednesday and take a break on Thursday. And then Friday, I got another gig and then blah, 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 blah. Jeez, busy man, busy man. I'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Life, man. Life life is definitely no joke nowadays. Uh, I feel you, man. Um, same here, just working, working like a maniac. Uh, summer's almost over, so I'm trying to get a little bit of fun time in before the summer is done. Um, and it's pretty much about it, man. Honestly, it's just work has been taking over my life. Uh, Legion of Jack says, in short, um, lots of adulting for Los. Yeah, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Believe me, I don't want to be adulting. That's the life. That's the life. Um, chat, let me know if any of our levels are a little off or not, if one of us are louder than the others. Um, like I said, I'm trying out a new software, so just trying to work out the kinks. Yeah, um, let me know if my volume is too low, because I still have a little headroom where I can boost my mic if necessary. Now, I think, uh, at least on my end, yours sounds fine. But yeah, chat, let me know um, if it's uh, too loud or too low. Um, so yeah, let's get, let, let's, let's pay the bills real quick. Uh, if you guys are watching this live on the YouTube side of things, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to stay updated from whenever we post the videos or go live. Uh, also, if you want to support us financially, don't forget you guys can uh, support us on patreon.com forward slash J house radio for as little as a dollar a month. You guys can get special, um, special, um, features, uh, such as behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you guys get early access to certain things. You get merch, so on and so forth. The list goes on. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to support us, do that. Also, if you're listening to us on the audio side of things, just, you know, send us a review, man. Hit those five stars. It helps. Um, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, other than that, um, Los, well, actually I wanted to uh, add something before we started jumping into our topics. Don't forget guys, uh, as of today, Sunday, April, April, August 27th. April. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to go back to spring guys. Come on, man. Um, Sunday, August 27th is National Cinema Day. So um, I believe it's pretty much everywhere. Honestly, check out your local theater. You will get discounted tickets. Some places are like $4. Um, so this Sunday, August 27th, definitely check that out. It's National Cinema Day. So I figured cinema is one of the things that we talk about on the podcast. So I figured I had to throw that out there for you guys. Yeah. Um, so Biki Bora in chat. How's it going, man? But Bobby, we got a lot of people popping up in chat that we haven't seen in a while, man. That's I know. Cool. How's it going, Beaky? How you doing, man? Um, all right, so let's jump into, speaking of Patreon, let's jump into our Patreon question um, for the day, which uh, if if you are a Patreon member, you have the option to um, ask us a question that we pretty much adding a topic to the show and that we uh, deep dive and, you know, jump into. So you guys have some kind of control of the podcast. The question that we have for today, and Los, I'm going to ask you first, what film slash character scared you as a kid or both actually uh the shark from jaws the shark from jaws really yeah interesting interesting okay I, like, okay this, this is what you got to understand like um uh my both my both my parents were like you know well my father's side um they were like carpenters and builders but they lived you know in the middle of the country and my mother's mm-hmm. side, they were farmers in the middle of the country. So, like, going to the ocean and stuff and swimming was like, I don't know how to swim, you know? <laughs> uh, and true. my chunky ass would, would be would be like shark food. <laughs> <laughs> so, anytime we go to the, like, after we saw Jaws, which is the worst thing ever, like, we go to the beach, I'm like, I'm not going in the water. 
There are sharks wow. there. Yeah, I can, so it would be Jaws for me. I can totally understand that. I think Jaw, Jaw scared the crap out of everybody, man, during that time, um, especially me. Um, geez, for me, it might might be a few, but I'll give like maybe two or three. Uh, I would definitely say Freddy Krueger as a kid. I thought he was freaking terrifying as a kid. Obviously, later really? on. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just something about his sadistic nature. You know, like he would like kill people, but then he would like, it's almost like a, like, like a vicious predator, like playing with their food before they like devour you. Like, that's what I felt like Freddy Krueger was. And that, that okay. like, like that part was just like very terrifying for me for some reason as a kid. So, um, but as obviously as, as, as I got older, like he's pretty much like a comedian at this point to me. So, you know, but yeah, I, I, w- I would have to say Freddy Krueger. Honestly, and maybe even um, the uh, Exorcist movie, terrifying. You Can't know, watch. I've never found that movie terrifying. I've always found that movie to be like interesting. Okay, like I don't like horror movies; it's just not my thing. But I'll watch a, a, a possession horror movie like those. I'm like, ooh, like, and, and if anyone gives me a jump scare in a possession movie, I'm like, that's a good movie because I normally don't get scared during those. Yeah. Yeah, but I enjoy watching it. I enjoy the story. I enjoy the mythology behind it and, and how they interweave it into everything. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I'm not into horror movies because a lot of them follow the same formula, you know, yeah. like, oh, it's been it's been and you could literally time this it, almost every uh, seven to 12 minutes is a jump scare. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Every seven to 12 minutes is a jump scare. OK, uh, the one white woman survives. Um, all of us of color usually die during the opening credits, you know, like usually. It, yeah, we're getting we're getting better, though, like like us, 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 us like uh, minorities are surviving a little longer in, in horror movies, like not like not as long, but a little longer. You know, what I mean, like some of us are like almost practically making it to the end, like especially in the most recent screen movie. They had they had a uh, a black kid who actually survived like the first two movies, so I was very surprised. Oh, really? We're moving on up, man. But then again, he's I think, I think he's half black, so you know it's it's that asterisk. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, if you if you claim him, then that's all right. If you don't yeah. claim him, that's all right too. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, chat. Let me know anybody watching live. What what are some of your um. What film or character scared the crap out of you as a kid? Curious to know for sure. Um, all right, let's jump into our random facts. Los, I'm going to let you go first on this one. What do you have for right, people oh, today? Let me pull it up. Uh, Sir Alec Guinness hated Star Wars. The original Obi-Wan Kenobi hated Star Wars. He really? thought it was childish and he didn't like it at all. Although he was very professional on the set, very polite to everyone, but he hated Star Wars. And the only reason why he did it was because he needed the money. Wow. That's very interesting. Very interesting. All right. I wonder why, like, did, did he say why he hated it, like, in particular? Uh, he just thought it was childish. He was, look, there's a story about him where a kid asked him for an autograph. And he goes, well, where do you know me from? He's like, from Star Wars. So... Uh, Mr. Alex, Sir Alex Guinness told him, I'll sign your autograph if you agree never to watch the movie again. Wow. Why did he hate it so much? Was it really? It was not that childish. Come on. Have you, have you ever seen the movie The Bridge Over the River Kwai? I don't think so. It sounds familiar, but I don't think I've seen it though. Excellent, excellent, excellent movie. It's about uh, British soldiers who were captured by the Japanese and were forced to build a bridge. And Mm -hmm. then the day that the bridge was built, the British soldiers destroyed the bridge and most of them died. And Alex Guinness was in it. Mm -hmm. Amazing movie. He's an amazing actor. But the only thing he's remembered for is Star Wars. Wow. The one movie. Isn't it funny how there are so many actors, directors who have films that they hate, but fans love? Like, for example, um, Stephen King hated his film. Well, he didn't hate his film because he didn't really make it. But he hated the fact that there was a film named uh, that was made after his book, The Shining. Like he hated the film, you know, because like he wrote the book, but he didn't, you know, direct the film, but he hated it. So it's kind of funny how that happens all the time. Uh, Legion in chat answering our question about um, favorite horror movie or character. He said for him, it's Leprechaun from 93. Uh, That dang Leprechaun still creeps me out. 
Yeah, that 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 leprechaun is weird looking, man. He's he's, he's very oh, weird looking. And you know who who was the actor who played the leprechaun? Who? The same actor from Willow who also played one of the Ewoks. You know what? That actually makes sense. I think I know exactly who you're talking about because it actually kind of looks like him, like in the like in the cheek area. It kind of looks like him. Um, IMDb. Yes, <laughs> IMDb. I choose you. I'm actually looking it up right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I was Warwick, actually Warwick Davis. Yeah, Warwick Davis. Okay. Yeah, that that guy actually didn't they speaking of Willow, didn't they make a new Willow recently? Fairly recently for Disney uh, Plus? A TV series. A TV yeah, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to go back and watch that because I actually loved Willow as a kid. Like that. Well, I don't think it was called Willow, it was called something else. I forgot what it was called. Um but I, I freaking loved it as a kid, though. But yeah, Leprechaun used to scare the crap out of me. Any, any, any time you get somebody that's like two feet tall that looks creepy chasing you around like a doll, scares the crap out of me for sure. He's a good actor, though. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good. I, I've seen some of his work growing up. Honestly, he's a pretty uh, good actor. He, oh god, what was the name of that TV show he was in? He was in this TV show um, where. Uh, which is freaking hysterical. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. I'm 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 on his IMDb. Okay. Uh we really gotta like buckle down and just get a sponsorship with IMDb. Like at this point. Yo, they re- they really should sponsor us. <laughs> we really just gotta do it. I, I think I need to make a call tomorrow, guys. I think I make a call. Cause we reference them so much. Literally. I, I don't think there has ever been an episode that we haven't like said. IMDb, like you know, I choose. No, you. but it's true though. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... damn it. Well, anyway, there was this TV show where him and one other guy, they would um, go on these trips, and these trips were um, what do you call it? Where they would go on these different type of adventures and stuff. And while while um, Warwick Davis was very positive and wanted to try all the things, the guy he was with. Like yeah. was a very negative person. He was like, "No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that." And it was the absolute most hysterical show. If you listen, if, if you find out, you gotta let me know then, because that 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 actually sounds kind of interesting. Then, because like I love a lot of his work, honestly, I really do. Uh, when he's doing, when he's on the screen, it's just like you just have to pay attention to that guy. Yeah, Ricky Ger- Gervanis. I can't pronounce his name. He's actually he actually did the show. Oh, okay. Um, he was the um, the executive producer. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So, uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, uh, definitely one of those characters that scared the crap out of me too as a kid was Leprechaun. I definitely agree with you, Legion. Um, all right, I'm gonna jump into my random fact, uh, which is also another one that's Star Star Wars related. Um, R two D two actually spoke before. Um. Kind of. Uh, and I, I got this from bestlife.com, um, random fact. So apparently in the original script, it was uh, originally written back in 1974 that R2-D2 actually spoke complete sentences. Um, and, and like some of the some of the stuff that he would say to like C-3PO, like he was actually kind of a kind of a jerk to C-3PO. That was the original idea of, of, the, of the script. He would call him like, you're you're mindless. You're useless. You're nothing. So on and so forth. Like just bashing C3PO. So that was the original idea of R2D2 was to basically be a metal douchebag. Honestly. So okay. Uh, yeah. So at at some point they did. I think they did record scenes of him actually speaking and so on and so forth. But then they trashed it and went to a totally different direction. So at one point, R2D2 technically spoke actual like language <laughs> okay so, i wonder i wonder i wonder how that would have changed that perspective of that character like i wonder how things would have been in terms of that character as we see it over the years if he actually did speak and he was a douchebag um i don't really think it changed much because everyone kind of thinks of him as r is one of these weird characters he's like uh, uh he's a genius pilot he's a genius engineer uh, mm-hmm. or, or mechanic, depending on your point of view, uh, <laughs> and he's kind of rude to everybody, but he's also your loyal buddy. 
So Archer's yeah. a very strange character in the sense of like I think he can get away with more stuff mm -hmm. because he's a little robot, as opposed to if he looked like three PO and he was a jerk or he was more humanoid. That's true. That's true. So yeah, I mean, I thought that was very interesting. Like I said, I figured since we uh, since our main topic today is, is Star Wars, I figured why not have a Star Wars main um, a Star Wars random fact. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um. All right. So see let us actually move on to our main topics here just give me one second um so this past so a few days ago we just recently had gamescom which is a game event that happens in um germany actually where a bunch of game developers and so on and so forth get together and they talk about upcoming projects uh there's a new project actually they that they talked about a little bit more i believe that a few content creators got some hands on to call the playstation portal did you hear about that los yet or no uh, repeat that again playstation portal did you hear about what that about one? it no. uh, so, so it's basically a new device that playstation is putting out um where i don't know if you used the remote feature on your playstation before where you can actually connect your phone or your tablet to your PlayStation, and you can basically play your PlayStation sitting on a toilet, sitting in the bathroom, in the hotel room, wherever, basically, on your phone, on your tablet. Um, you can do that now, but they come out, they came out with a device that's dedicated just to do that, basically. I'm guessing maybe for better connectivity to your PlayStation 5. Um, um, so, yeah. I have used it, you have but used it, uh, it doesn't work too good. Yeah, it well... Was it like really like laggy for you or? Um, laggy and, and when it wasn't laggy, it was very like low frame rates. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it also really depends on your internet connection. Honestly, it just really depends on your internet connection. I mean, I've so tried. I'm talking in the house. While oh, you I, tried it in the house. Well, like I'm in my bedroom and the, 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 well, this was with PS4. And okay. the PS4 was in the living room. Oh wow, jeez, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not the best, but I'm, what they're putting out is they're putting out a new project. I mean, a new product that I'm guessing is supposed to enhance that, and it's supposed. It looks. I'm actually going to pull up a picture for you guys in a minute. Actually, is Sony trying to create an, uh, a portable game console again? So what it is basically, it is kind of funny because it's called PlayStation Portable. Because the first portable, per, the first portable hardware they put out was called PSP, and the initials of this is PSP. It's kind of funny. Um, no, PSP so what is it, the one with the with the CD like thing, right? Yeah, like the little like UMD disc thing that they had. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So this one, it basically works. Uh, just as if like you were to connect a backbone to your phone and play remote play. It's for remote play only. They basically took two. They basically took a PS5 controller, split it in two, and put a 1080p screen in the middle um, of it for. And it's just for remote play. Um, so it's kind of weird because I thought that maybe they would have done it where you can like actually do some cloud streaming, maybe or maybe have like download an actual game to the actual device itself. But it's just for remote play, so I wonder. And I wonder if this if this is going to really be for a lot of people. It's going to be two hundred bucks. Uh, you can you can connect Bluetooth headphones to it. Um, the screen, from what I saw in some videos, it actually looks nice. It looks okay, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, do you see yourself buying this Los? Like, um, well, first of all, two hundred two hundred dollars is a really good price. I, I will have to say that. I would buy it if. The next time I try remote play and it works really well on my iPad, I would buy that. Yeah. Um, because that was that was the whole thing for me. It was because it didn't work well. And I'm connected through Ethernet. And I'm not even connected through Wi-Fi. It would, didn't work. Yeah. So, yeah. but I think that if it was cloud gaming, I, I would 100% jump on it and get that. Yeah. Yeah, I I, 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 I think I might get it. I I think I might get it. I've been like honestly for me, I've been playing a lot on my backbone through do like remote play. Uh, my internet's pretty decent, so my experience with remote play has been a little probably a little better. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's only two hundred dollars. I actually thought it was going to be like three hundred dollars, which I would have definitely have not purchased that. But since it's only two hundred dollars, I don't see why I wouldn't get it. I think I actually will 
actually invest into this because I do play a lot on the go. Like when I'm outside the house, uh, a lot of times I don't get a chance to sit at my couch and play. I'm laying in my bed or so on and so forth. So I think this might be the device for me for sure. So the thing is, two hundred is is that that sweet spot of a price point where you're like, well, it's kind of expensive, but not really. I mean, I can kind of swing that. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and I, I think the original backbone that you just attached to your phone is a hundred dollars. So you're basically paying a hundred more dollars for the screen. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's not bad. But yeah, I mean, uh, and it's a bigger screen. Yeah, it's a bigger screen. Which and actually, uh, from what a lot of people have said, uh, a, a really a really good looking screen too. Even, even though it's 1080p. So, but we'll see. I think this is supposed to also enhance the remote play feature in general because of whatever hardware they have in there, whatever they have in their cloud servers. So we'll see. It's supposed to be dropping this year. We don't have an exact date, but we do know that it is $200. And I'll, I'll definitely grab it. Maybe I'll do like an unboxing once I grab it, you know, live on stream. So you should. Here's the question I have for you. How many people do you know have a 4K television? Um, wow. Um, I think let's say if I, out of 10 people, maybe like four or five. Maybe? That's more than me. So yeah. I never understood why people always knock it. Oh, but it's only 1080p. Well, you're you're playing the game on a 1080p television at home. It's just 55 inches, but yeah. it's still 1080p. So 1080p to me is not um, a down point uh, of the game. You know, it, it's just kind of like, all right, it's the same quality that I watch at home. Yeah, that's true. I, I do hear a lot of people talk crap about like uh, 1080p when it comes to like <clears throat> like film and gaming and stuff like that and i mean i guess it just depends on you as a viewer as a consumer as a as a gamer like do you do you want more frame rates like because for me I, i'd rather have high frame rates like when it comes to gaming i'd rather have high frame rates and i'll i'll do with 1440 you know maybe even 1080 you know i don't i don't mind that you yeah. know but uh I'm there are a lot that. of yeah, there are a lot of things that can still look good at 1080. Like 1080 is it's still fine. It's not it's not a problem, you know. So no. Hey, listen, a lot of people look at adult movies at 1080 and they're not complaining. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say? <laughs> exactly. So what's that the is that that is the measuring stick right there for sure. <laughs> yeah. Put you're looking at a 1080 at 30 frames per second and you're not complaining. So like yeah. really. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. PlayStation Portal coming out this uh, sometime later on this year. Can't wait for sure. All right, let's get ready to jump into our main topic here. The one thing that we are all here for, and that is Ahsoka. Um, That's right. I'm going to give um, I'm going to give a disclaimer here, just so everybody knows, because I know Los is going to yell at me. Everybody else is going to yell at me. Don't worry, I did watch the show. It's not that. <laughs> okay. Um. I have not. Seen... to be a very short review. The trailer <laughs> was great. Bye. Gotta go. <laughs> Could you imagine? The trailer was great, guys. Go watch it because I didn't watch it yet. Um, I would have to say that I have I have not seen the Clone Wars, uh, like cartoon, Ugh. the animated. Listen, I know. Listen, I know. I know there are a lot of people out there who are like, hey, listen, you need to watch this. You need to watch that. I saw a video that was breaking down everything you need to watch before you watch Ahsoka. And it was like literally hours and hours, like days, maybe a week of content to watch before you watch Ahsoka. And I get it. That's fine. But for me, I'm like, who wants to do that? I don't want to do okay. that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Screen Crush, the, the YouTube channel Screen Crush has a video, 126 hours in 26 minutes that will give you the whole background of Ahsoka. 126 hours come on no it literally says 126 hours and 29 minutes so in other words they break down all of ahsoka's background in 29 minutes so you're up to date and you know everything that's going on with the character uh, okay all right I, I i guess i guess i mean like i don't mind checking out a video or two an episode of something uh you know real quick maybe a few clips but when people start breaking down, like, hey, you got to watch five movies, 10 TV shows, but in the TV shows, watch episode one, five, part of seven, maybe the last two seconds of nine. And I'm like, all right, come on. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know what, though? And, and here's the sad part when you're talking about a, a, a multi generational um, franchise that has lasted 
decades, you know, I don't, uh, probably even like 50 years or, or, or no, 40 years, whatever Star Wars is, you're going to have a lot of history you have to deal with. And the thing is about Ahsoka, Ahsoka is everything that people want to see in the Jedi story, you know, like uh, being tempted from the dark side, you know, death, rebirth, um, skill level, you know, uh, being humble when you could be cocky and things like that, you know? Yeah. So you honestly, if you're not going to watch, you know, two cartoon series completely, then maybe you should watch that video to get some of the background. Because yeah. the thing is, there is so many Easter eggs in Ahsoka that unless you've watched all the previous stuff, you're not going to get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I totally get that. I, I totally get that. Um, so, so yeah. what, what, what is your understanding of the character since you haven't seen all the backstory? Just my broad understanding of the character. Like, just like, what, what do you mean? Like understanding just like, like what's her history? Like, you know, how does she come to be? Oh, uh, I mean, connected with in, in from, the franchise. From what I do know, I, so I could be wrong. So did, so did she train Anakin or did Anakin train her? Ah, see, now we're talking. So Ahsoka, I did. I figured that Ahsoka was Anakin's Padawan. In other words, um, he was the master; she was a student. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and the thing, and the reason why Yoda paired them up because they both had the very same type of personality, mm -hmm. where they kind of um, they're quick to respond. You know, they're kind of adrenaline junkies, and mm -hmm. like they attack problems head on. And the reason why Yoda put Ahsoka with Anakin was so Anakin could grow up more and become a better Jedi. And Ahsoka was very um, Klopun. I think that's how you pronounce his name. The, the one Jedi who's always wearing the mask. Um, he's the one who discovered her and he's the one uh, who trained her when she was a youngling. And then when she was ready to become a Padawan, uh, Yoda paired her up with Anakin and Ahsoka is one of the the last few um, Jedi trained, but she's not a Jedi um, mm -hmm. left in the Star Wars universe at that time. And she yeah. also helped teach students at Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy. Okay, see, and and that's one thing that did kind of I was a little confused about in the show is. Well, at least at least with uh, Mandalorian, is that she was like she kept saying, je like she was Jedi trained, but she's not a Jedi. So I was like, wait, so then how is she Jedi trained? Plus, she had to be a Jedi to be Jedi trained. No, I think that's what I. Thought. Okay, all right. So 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 now I'm about to schools you, and and mind you, I'd like to remind everybody I'm a Star Trek fan. Yet I know this. Um, <laughs> Ahsoka did go through the Jedi Temple, right? But what happens is towards the end of the series. The second to last season of Clone Wars, someone placed a bomb in uh, the Jedi Temple. It exploded, and they framed Ahsoka for it. So Ahsoka ran to try to prove her innocence. She finally proved her innocence. The Jedi Council said, all right, we'll let you come back to the Jedi Order as Anakin's Padawan. And mm. she said, no thanks. I'm done with the Jedi. So she quit before she could become a full-fledged Jedi. Okay. And she went out on her own. And she did her own force training and everything else. But mm. she's not a Jedi because she never received the title of Jedi. But she did go through the Jedi Academy. She did go through the Jedi Temple. She was a Padawan. And mm. she is um, trained in, in, in the force. But she's not a Jedi because she never received the title. People call her a Jedi, but she'll literally tell you, I am no Jedi. Mm. Okay. So that, that's why I was a little annoyed during the opening crawl. Mm -hmm. They said Jedi Ahsoka Tano, and she's like, I'm no Jedi. So that annoyed me. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I, I noticed that um so that, so it, even though she's not a Jedi, she can still have a she can still have her own Padawan and teach them Jedi, even though she's not Jedi. At this point. There is no Jedi, really. There is no Jedi Academy. There's no Jedi Council. Yeah. You know, she is the closest thing you can get to a Jedi other than Luke Skywalker. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so she understands her understanding of 
what her her apprentice is is a padawan so the sith call them apprentice and the jedi call them padawans Mm -hmm. so because she deals with the light side she calls her student a padawan okay makes sense makes sense um what's your all right so another question besides ahsoka who's your favorite character so far in the show In in the show yeah um don't really have one really and the reason why is the first two episodes are very much all set up Mm. so there is really nothing you can look at uh the other characters that came from rebels like sabine and um crap uh what's the other one called uh give me one second uh sabine came from rebels i think did Hera come from Rebels too? So, yeah, um, Sabine and Sindula, Hera Sindula, the general. Yeah, um, absolutely um, came from Rebels. And when I watch Rebels, they weren't my favorite characters. So this kind of carries over. But they're not my favorite characters. They were good characters. I'm mm-hmm. not saying anything bad about them. It's just I wasn't drawn towards them like I was drawn towards um, Ezra and Caleb. Oh, that was loud. Sorry, chat. Okay. Yeah, I honestly I would have to agree. Same here. Um it's it is a little too early uh to really pick a character because like you say, it is a lot of setup. It's a you know, yeah. it it I mean the first episode started off a little slow. Second episode picked up a little bit, you know, gave us a little bit of taste of what we could, you know, look forward to, especially as far as like fight scenes and you know, things like that. Um but yeah, I can't really say I have a favorite character at the moment. Honestly, I am intrigued by um, maybe the robot. The robot, hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's also a deep dive into the Clone Wars. Since you don't know, I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. that droid is uh, several thousand years old, mm-hmm. and he helps every single person who's gone through the Jedi um, Temple build mm-hmm. their lightsabers he has really? a record of every lightsaber ever built name the wow. jedi he helped them build the lightsaber interesting so he's probably my second favorite in the show interesting wow i'm actually i'm actually really really surprised at that i did not know that <laughs> yeah um but yeah, I, I think yeah that that's actually a good point if i had to pick somebody that i'm semi interested in the, the robot does seem a little interesting just with the type of conversations that he has and like his knowledge and things like that. Um, I would have to say he's probably pretty interesting so far. Um, I will also say that I'm mildly intrigued by Balin and his apprentice. Um, I don't know. Like there's, there's mystery to that character. Uh, I'm, it, is he from Clone Wars as well? Um, he's far, like I don't recognize him from anything. As far as I know, he's a new character. Okay. But, According to the lore of the show, he did go to the Jedi. He was a Jedi. Okay. He, he was a full Jedi Knight. He, you know, he went to uh, he went through the Academy and part of the Jedi Temple and everything else, and he somehow survived Order sixty six. But mm-hmm. after Order sixty six, he became a mercenary. Okay. okay. And that's how he survived, and that's why his saber is not quite on the light side and not quite on the dark side. That's why it's orange. Interesting. All right, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let me see what else. Uh, what did you? What do you least like about the show right now, so far? Even though we're still pretty early. Uh, how stoic Ahsoka is. Really? <laughs> because if if you've watched all all the back stuff, you saw that she was always a character with kind of like how Obi Wan used to be. Like he always had a joke. Mm-hmm. He always had a, a snide remark and things like that. And this version of Ahsoka is, I, I don't want to say bitter, but just very stoic. And it's not the normal Ahsoka that I'm used to seeing. Okay. So, but it, 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 it feeds into the story. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't throw me off. I'm just like, wow, this is a different Ahsoka than what I'm used to seeing. But it's, it's still, you know, Rosaria Dawson did a great job. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not, her performance is great, but the person who I wish would have played Ahsoka was the person who voiced Ahsoka in the cartoons. Because they modeled Ahsoka a lot after her. 
Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, I I would have to agree. I did notice like immediately that she is very just calm and just like, I mean, like she has like a certain calm demeanor about her character, which is not like anything negative or anything like that. Um, it's just I, I noticed that immediately about her character. You know, as somebody who only first time seeing her was in Mandalorian. So, yeah. uh, do you think we'll get Anakin in this show? It's already said that he's going to show up in flashbacks. Really? Yeah, it's already been said. Okay. Yeah, I, I do know that the there's... trailer for episode three already has uh, Anakin in a voiceover. Oh, it does. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I I was purposely trying to stay away from like spoilers or anything as far as like what's happening in episodes or like who's going to be in the episodes. I've been trying to stay away from that stuff because you already know how I well, am. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing though, because you don't have any of the background knowledge mm-hmm. of the character i think for you to to look for spoilers isn't a bad thing yeah honestly okay yeah i mean like i said i, I do want to uh jump into some of the previous like uh uh like videos of like you know just to kind of give me a breakdown of the character because like i said i i'm not going to go back and watch all those shows animated films like i'm, I'm just not going to do that like my my backlog is insanely too long right now to even do any of that, to be honest with you. That's why you need to watch that Screen screen Crush video. Yeah, okay. If you watch that Screen Crush video, then you'll be like, oh, okay, I have all the information I need. Mm-hmm. True indeed, true you know. indeed. Yeah, so I mean, so far, I mean, I think it's it starts off slow. Uh, I don't really have anything negative to say about the show. I think it's still too early to even really judge it. Uh, I will admit, as always, just with any of the Star Wars series that we've had so far, it looks beautiful. Like I, yeah. I just I noticed immediately. I was watching. I I had, I was watching it on my 4K TV as you were just talking about 4K, and I freaking ramped up my settings. And I was like, man, this just looks beautiful and crisp. And man, big up to Disney, big up to Lucas. Uh, like they, they are really putting in some top notch quality into these Star Wars shows. Like they look yes. amazing. And, and the uh, continuity is amazing too. Like, um, just, to, just to give you one detail, uh, in the Ahsoka series, when she's talking to, uh, Hera in that room with the round table, mm-hmm. Do you know where that round table was seen before? No, it wasn't seen. Uh, you saw it in Star Wars when they were looking at plans of the Death Star. That's that same room on the same ship. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and I can go on and on and on about how much um, how much they continue continuity. Even the uniforms are some of them were seen in previous Star Wars uh, movies and shows. That was mm. hideous uniforms that like <laughs> even in the 70s they were ugly <laughs> wow that's interesting yeah it's it's I, I know there's a lot of stuff in here um that i just i probably won't catch at least not until like you said i i, I check out some of the previous content as far as like the ahsoka character and things like that so um but yeah it's I, i'm loving it man so far it's it's pretty good it's pretty good um so, so let me ask you this question so how lost were you Watching the Mandalorian when Ahsoka showed up, you're like, "Who the hell's this?" Well, I actually knew of Ahsoka, like the character, because I I know people who watched the Clone Wars, and a lot of people were, were talking about the character. I've seen clips of Ahsoka, so I knew of her, and then I heard rumblings about Rosaria Dawson eventually playing this character online for so long that I eventually did look into it a little bit. So once she did come to Mandalorian, which I already knew that she was going to come before it even happened, uh, I kind of knew what was happening. Like I, I kind of expected it, so it wasn't like a just like a shot out of the dark out of nowhere. And like, oh wait, who the heck is this? You know. Okay. So it wasn't as bad. Um, how do you feel about the character? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Sabine. Sabine, is that considered that right? Uh, yeah. Sabine being Mandalorian slash. Padawan, like, isn't that kind of against the rules for her to be Mandalorian, but no. you to be a Jedi? No, the fir- the first ruler of Mandalore who um, had the dark saber was mm-hmm. a Jedi. Oh, okay. He was a Jedi. So, although it is rare, extremely rare, 
to have a Mandalorian be a Jedi. It is not against the rules or the norm. Because look at Grogu. Grogu's going to wind up being a Mandalorian Jedi. That is true. Yeah, you know, I forgot that Grogu w- w- was actually training to be a Jedi. Yeah. I completely forgot about I, I, I'm still under the idea that the show is not about Din Djarin. The show is about Din Grogu. Yeah, I, I think last the last season showed us that it, it's, as far as Mandalorian we're talking about, guys. I uh, that I think that definitely showed us that that this was about the the adventure, the um like like Grogu's story, you know, yeah. and Din Djarin was just part of it. He was just there to like tag along, basically, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's or, or or in typical Star Wars tradition, you know, the story starts with the father and then goes to the son. That's true. That's true. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's interesting, man. Disney's doing their thing with these Star Wars shows. Ahsoka's great uh, so far. Well, I want to say great. It's interesting. It's entertaining. Um, if you had to give this any chocolate bunnies for the first two episodes so far, what does Ahsoka deserve? A four. Uh, because it's a really good setup. They they continued so much continuity, everything from the ship Ahsoka flies that she used to fly during the Clone Wars, um, her use of the two lightsabers, the length of the two lightsabers, mm-hmm. uh, her look, her markings. Um, the only thing I don't like is her pants. Her pants. I don't think I paid yes. attention to her pants. <laughs> and uh, and the reason why is Ahsoka in every other um, rendition always had more of uh, form-fitting pants because she's very uh, acrobatic. And so because she's so acrobatic, you know, like a gymnast competing in, in the Olympics, they wear very form-fitting clothes because it won't get in their way when they're, when they're making moves. And I think the pants just make her look too bulky. And, uh, and because we have, when she add the robes, she just looks so bulky and she doesn't seem that, She'd be that agile. And Ahsoka is one of the most agile Jedi hmm. uh, that that there's been on the show. I think I think that's a a Hollywood move because if you look at the way a lot of the Jedi uh how they look in most of the most recent Star Wars shows, they usually have like this big clothing that just flows in the wind. You know what I mean? Like I I don't know, just to give like that cinematic look. You know, right right before they fight. Honestly, um, I think it's so they could hide the stuntman. Oh yeah, that too. Hide the stuntman. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, th- that's what I think it is. So that yeah. way, you could have either a male or female perform it, and because the outfit is so bulky, you really can't tell. That yeah, that is very true. That's very true. So, but yeah, I mean, um, what do you? Um, just last few questions. What what do you think of the overall just? look of Ahsoka. Like, I don't know if we talked about it before, you know, being, you know, being that Rosaria Dawson has grabbed this character as her own. What do you think of the live action look of Ahsoka? I think it's good. And like I said, it's very consistent with the rest of Star Wars, the Star Wars Mm -hmm. TV shows. Um, The look of what is Rebel and what, excuse me, what is um, the the Rebel Alliance Mm -hmm. or whatever the government is called. Um, and um, all the people who were former Empire, mm-hmm. uh, former Imperials, uh, all of it just is very consistent. Each planet has its own look. Each planet has its own feel. The characters are consistent. You know, it's just like the, it's very well thought out. You, this has Dave Filoni's fingerprints all over it yeah. because he created Ahsoka and that's that's his favorite character in all of Star Wars. And he will always do that character justice. Interesting. Interesting. I feel you. Although Sabine um, Wren um, is very different in this series as compared to the way she was in Star Wars Rebels. Interesting. Very, I, very different. I don't like the hair color of Sabine Wren. It matches the cartoon. Yeah. I don't like the yeah. hair color. I mean, I get it, but I don't know. It just feels... I mean, I, I guess there are different styles. There are different people in that universe, but it just feels a little out of place. In my opinion. Well, here's the thing. Um, Sabine is an artist. Mm -hmm. And so this is why they kept showing her drawings and 
when she went into the when her, her house, the communications tower mm -hmm. uh, that used to be Ezra's. That's why you see like all these paintings. That's why her Mandalorian um, armor is all different colors. Mm -hmm. That's why when she looked at her old uh, her old bed on Ahsoka's ship, how you saw all those drawings everywhere. Like yeah. they always constantly show how she's an artist, but because she's Mandalorian, she not only just has to be an artist, she also has to be a warrior. Mm. And in um, Rebels, you saw how she was a warrior, but she wasn't as good as other Mandalorian. Like if she was, if she was to fight Din, Din, Din would whoop her ass. <laughs> yeah, probably so. And then uh, freaking Baby Yoda would like finish off the rest of her for sure. Oh, uh, what's her name? Um, give me one second. Uh, yeah, I am DB. I choose you. Uh, <laughs> Mandalorian. Uh, Ahsoka is also really good friends with um, Bo Katan. Yeah, I think they did. They talk about that in Mandalorian. I think. I feel like they I. Did. I don't remember, but Ahsoka helped Bo Katan um, get rid of the Empire for Mandalore. So oh, Ahsoka okay. is a very important character in the lore of Star Wars. Um, she's just as important as Luke. Wow, that's big. That's big. Yeah, I'm. I'm. So, I'm, I'm curious to see if, uh, depending on how successful this this show is, if she'll make it to the actual big screen whenever we get another Star Wars movie. Um, there is rumors that she is going to make it into the next Star Wars trilogy. Mm. But then again, that's rumors, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I mean, um, as far as my opinion on the first two episodes, as far as chocolate bunnies are concerned, uh, one out of five, five being the highest. Um, I, I'll, I'll give it a four as well, honestly. I think a lot of that also for me comes from just the quality of the show, the look of the show, the characters. Uh, Ahsoka looks amazing. I think Rosario Dawson is doing a pretty good job so far. Um, and even somebody that doesn't have a lot of back history on Ahsoka, I just I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I, I do I do want to look into more of if like more information about her before I go into episode three, just to like catch up on some of the references that, that they might try to throw out throughout the series. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I would definitely get this for sure. Uh, four chocolate bunnies out of five so far for the first two episodes, and uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing what we touch back on the review at the end of the season or do you want to do like yeah uh, once the season's over we'll do we'll do a season review um okay. because we're not doing another she hulk situation where we watched where we did every episode yeah um doing uh a premiere episode and then a series finale is great because we still have time to to do all this other stuff like think about it our next two shows are blue beetle and then star trek strange new worlds yeah sure so it gives us a chance to, to to constantly stay in pop culture and focus on our topic as opposed to, you know, just, you know, going, OK, once again to Ahsoka, <laughs> let's talk this much about, you know, other <laughs> stuff that's happening in pop culture. Yeah, um, sure. Although I will say this, uh, I am waiting to see the new T-shirts that are going to be coming out because of some particular person's mugshot. What? What do you mean? Uh, somebody, um, uh, a very famous political person. Oh, um, <laughs> your buddy got taken today, and yes. literally all over TikTok, everyone's saying, "I can't wait to buy a T-shirt of that mugshot and this, that, and the other thing, and blah blah blah." So I'm very, I'm very curious how many of those I'm going to see in the wild. And for anybody who doesn't know what Los is talking about, he's talking about our our, our boy Trump. Uh, yeah, he, uh, so he's officially in jail now, right? No, no, no. He, he um, <sighs> okay, really, I'm going to recap this really quick and then we're going to drop politics. Okay. Um, he was arrested, processed, and then he called the bails bondsman to pay the $200,000 bail. And currently right now, Trump has no lawyer because his lawyer quit because Trump has not paid him. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. What a way. What a way to go down, Trump. What a way to go down. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. But back to more pleasant things to talk about. Um, I'm 
I'm curious to like Ahsoka is one of the the most popular cosplayed female Star Wars character ever. Like if you ever go to you know a Comic Con or whatever, you'll see so many Ahsokas from the Star Wars end of stuff that it is absolutely ridiculous because people really? love that character so much. Wow. Yeah, and especially That's... since she's so funny too, you know. But she's also tough. Because yeah. I- imagine seeing someone who's like four foot four foot eleven five feet one you know skinny mm. you like you know and you're gonna fight them you're like i'm gonna whoop this i'm gonna whoop the crap out of this girl and then she pulls out two lightsabers and beats the crap out of like 100 soldiers yeah. not even breaking a sweat you're gonna be like oh crap so it, um ahsoka's great for positive images of women positive image of women warriors positive image of uh female empowerment in a in a very positive way because Ahsoka's never about well, like a man did this to me and blah blah blah. Ahsoka's very much like, <laughs> you know, this is who I am. I will make no apologies for it, but I'm also not here to hurt anybody. I- I'm here to just uh, try to make the universe a better place. You know, one mission at a time. Sounds good. No better way spoken than what Los already just said for sure. Yeah. Um, so what about the series? What about the, the the two episodes did you not like? What did I not like? Hmm. Besides, um, besides Sabine Wren's hair, <laughs> um, I don't when it was longer when it was short. When it was longer, I don't know. I mean, I know you said I know you said that that's part of the original character, so I can't really say much about that. But um, I don't know. I wouldn't really say i dislike much of anything I, th- I thought it was a good start uh there wasn't really much for me to complain i guess also because i don't have a lot of history on the character so there's not really much room for me to say oh well this is like this i didn't like it because it's different from the cartoon or so on and so forth um so yeah i can't really say i have much or anything at all to complain about at the moment i think it is still too early i'm still learning this universe i'm learning these characters I'm just figuring out like some of the backstory and things like that. So I'm in the the honeymoon phase, if you will, of Ahsoka right now and, until I really understand these characters more. So as of right now, besides the hair, I don't really have anything that I can say that I don't like about this show right now. I, I think it's I too have, early for me. I have three things that I didn't like. Um, okay. Very, very minor stuff. One, the lightsaber battle, I think could have been done a little better. Oh, the I would have the one because it was with with Sabine and the blonde. Oh yeah, yeah. I actually I forgot about that one. I forgot about that one. Uh, I wish I could have seen Sabine a little more um, capable with the lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because uh, she seemed very clumsy. But then again, if she was really good with the lightsaber in the beginning, she she you know that's like she doesn't have a chance to journey towards being a better uh, yeah uh, lightsaber yeah. battle. Um, the other thing I didn't like, um, was that there wasn't enough of, um, uh, Morgan, Diana Lee in Asanto, because okay. do, you, do you know who she is? Mm, like in the show or in real life? Like, in real life. No. Who is she? That's Bruce Lee's goddaughter. Wow, Diana Lee. <laughs> yes, wow. that's why she has Lee as her middle name. Her father is Dan Inesanto, is the person who took over um, Bruce Lee's martial arts school. Interesting. So wow. small and, world. Yeah, not she is. She is uh, an infamous, like like incredibly good fight coordinator. She's done a bunch of movies and she's directed a, a, a movie or two and she's acted in a few things. I wish I could have seen more of her because I feel like she is such a strong presence in the show. Like she feels like a real threat. So I wish there was a little more of her. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Because uh, like, um, I'll get, I'm sorry. No, no, okay, okay, continue. And I was going to say like when I first was introduced to her, I think in the first episode, I didn't really know who she was. And I was like, all right, who is this random woman you know uh but then oh, you, towards... don't, you don't remember her from the mandalorian 
I don't remember her for the Mandalorian. I, I don't. I don't remember. Remember the episode in the Mandalorian where Ahsoka first shows up, and then she fights the woman with the with the staff. Oh, that's her. I forgot her. about that. Jeez, I completely forgot. I haven't seen that show in so long. Yeah. Wow. And, and okay. Once, once you watch that screen screen crush video, yeah, the fact that she's a witch will you'll understand why it's so important that she's one of the Night Sisters. To give you a clue who one of the Night Sisters were, um, Darth Maul, mm -hmm. he's part of the same species as the Night Sisters. Really? Yes. So um, that's that's a whole other connection that you need to look into. Um, so here's the last thing that I have to complain about, and it's an editing thing. Okay? Okay. When? there When? Um, oh, hold on. Let me, let me get that character's name. Uh Balin Skull, the 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 bad Jedi, if you will. Yeah. When he frees, uh, when he frees a Morgan, uh, he says, um, he says, well, who is this Jedi we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Instead of cutting to the title card that says Ahsoka, you know, they let her <laughs> say Ahsoka Tano, and then she walks. They both walk off the screen and it lingers for a second, and then the title card. I'm like, that was a missed opportunity to just. Bam! Throw it in your face, and it makes you want to watch that show even more. <laughs> there was just that 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 five or six seconds of, I personally think useless screen time that you could have just gotten rid of, and like punched you in the face, make you want, make you crazy to watch the rest of the episode. Who is it's, this person? Bam! Yeah. Title card. Bam! Title card. I I honestly think that um, that's so funny how when we talk about shows or movies our like filmmaker side just comes out and like, why did you edit that like that or cut that like that? It's, it's hard not to look at it like that though. It yeah. really is. It's I mean, look, it. these people, uh, Dave Filoni got into so much detail that even when that map um, floated up yeah. from the pedestal, there was a green flame. And the reason why the green flame is important because it's part of the Night Sisters because the Night Sisters are, are Dark Force users. Mm. And their power, their power base color is green. So ah, okay. even that little detail was in there. You know, um, there was just so many things. And um, on the internet, they're saying that the Inquisitor that Ahsoka fought, mm -hmm. they're saying that they think that's Ezra Miller, the person who they're looking for in the beginning. Oh, help us out with this. You can help find Ezra. Mm. Oh, that would be pretty interesting. Um. That would be interesting. Although, it'd be interesting story wise, but it doesn't make sense continuity wise. Okay. Was he was he, was that not how it went down in the show without giving away too much? Uh, in Rebels, what? No, I mean like the show's been like over and done with for years. So in Rebels, the uh, Ezra and Grand Admiral Thrawn um, were you know those space whales that that uh, fly through hyperspace. Mm -hmm. They they entangled up all of Thrawn's ships and Ezra was on one of the ships and then they bo bolted out to that other galaxy. So they're missing. They're, they're like gone from this galaxy and they're in the other one. Okay. So how would Ezra get back if he doesn't have a ship? He doesn't have a lightsaber. He doesn't have anything. So unless they, they do some timey wimey thing where they're like, you know, the night sisters try to bring him back from a different point in time and, and instead of grabbing Thrawn, they grabbed Ezra, and this version of Ezra is an Inquisitor, but I honestly think it's just an Inquisitor who, after the Empire Fall, was like, well, I'm a mercenary now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that actually would make sense, because like you said, for continuity purposes, why would that be like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why, why would he all of a sudden just appear? Like, where'd you come from? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you came yeah. back, but Thrawn didn't? Like, how did that work? <laughs> yeah, and not only that, Ahsoka would have recognized his fighting style. Ah, uh, good point. Good point. So that's why I don't believe it's Ezra Miller. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see, man. So far, still early. First two episodes. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, like Lo said, we're definitely going to come back and um, come back around to the show. Once the series is over, that way we can give you a full deep dive into like the entire series and just just to give our opinions on it so far honestly 
Oh, and by the way, uh, Dark Legion was like, that would be KJ uh, only to watch the trailer and not any of the background of Ahsoka. Uh, of course it would be me, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but like I said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try to catch up on some of the, you know, the actual videos or that talk about the actual history of Ahsoka before we go into the next episode. Honestly, dude, I, I was literally looking for a video for you to watch to catch up on stuff. Yeah. That Screen Crush video is the one to watch. Okay. Yeah. It, honestly, uh, if you, you know, if, if you can't send that to me in, in a Discord I'll, or just text it to me and I'll, I'll it, check it out. Uh, it's literally called Ahsoka and Star Wars Rebels Recap. Okay. I'll, I'll text it to you right now. You know what? I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to take a picture of it. <laughs> he said I'm going to be lazy and just take a picture of it. Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Sent. <laughs> So yeah, that's our that's our um, wrap up uh, of our first two episodes of Ahsoka so far. Um, all right, so before we get out of here, guys, we are going to jump into our um, recommendations. Los, do you have any recommendations for the beautiful people before you get out of here tonight? Yes, uh, a TV show called Warrior. Uh, Warrior, I try, gotta try to find out where where it's broadcasting on. All right, we all know who Bruce Lee is, right? Yes, sir. Okay, you know there was a TV show called uh, Kung Fu that uh, David Carradine was was a star of. Kung Fu, I gotta I gotta look at it. I see if I can find it. Warrior does sound familiar though. That does look a little familiar. Okay, well, Warrior is based off the original concept of what the te- what eventually became the movie Kung Fu. So. Um, I think Bruce Lee's daughter is involved in the production of it. I don't know exactly how. But um, did you see the movie Snake Eyes? Oh, uh, G.I. Joe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the actor who played Storm Shadow is the main character in Warrior. And it is an amazing show. Three seasons. Three seasons. The the last episode just aired uh, two or three weeks ago. And there's still not, no news if there's going to be a season four because of the writer strike and everything else. Mm-hmm. But um, Warrior is an amazing show, especially if you love drama, if you love kung fu, and if you love gangster shit. You will absolutely <laughs> love this movie. <laughs> no, because it is about two, two Chinese gangs trying to take over Chinatown. And then, but they're surrounded by. Uh, all these, you know, uh, Irish people who are very racist against them, and it is such a good show. And the the main character's sister is his sometimes ally, sometimes ally, mostly um, protagonist. Interesting. Yeah this this yeah. actually this looks like something that I would be interested in. And uh, Legion in chat said it's on HBO Max. Yes. So, interesting. Yeah, I, I I gotta check this out. I mean, I feel like I've seen, like, like I scrolled through HBO Max and I feel like I've seen the like the thumbnail of the show, but I just didn't think anything of it to like try to watch it. But Let me tell you something. If you watch the first episode, watch it early in your day because I will fucking guarantee you that you are going to binge watch it. Really? That is how good that show is. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm I'm off on Saturday. I'm off this Saturday, so I'm actually gonna check it out this Saturday. Uh, sorry, Legion and Chat. It's H. It's not called HBO Max anymore. It's just Max. I get it. I know. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Um, but yeah, this Saturday I'm off work. I'll check it out. I'll definitely check Listen, it out. If, if we do uh, a review of Warrior, I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not a five chocolate bunnies. It is a ten chocolate bunnies. Really? That is how good that show is. Did did this Lowe's... show is amazing? <laughs> did did Lowe's finally give something that's worth more than the chocolate bunny scale? Like yes. first time ever in J House Radio history. That's crazy. Yes, it the show is that good. Honestly, I do not see a flaw in the show. Wow, that's 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 different. That's different. I, I don't think I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever heard you praise anything like this before. <laughs> Listen, to be honest they, every uh, homage they do to Bruce Lee is such a 
very small and minute thing, but all of it fits into the story. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel doesn't feel like fan service. It doesn't feel like hero worship. It just kind of feels like, you know, if you're not aware that this is based on Bruce Lee's writings, you'd be like, oh, well, look, a Bruce Lee moment, you know, but you'd have to be a Bruce Lee fan to know it. Most people's version of Bruce Lee, the idea in their head is the posters. So when you say Bruce Lee's writings, like what do you mean when you say that? Like what what are you talking about? Like 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 his his books and stuff like that? No, well yes, part of it is based on that, but this is based off what he wrote for the the TV series that was going to be called Kung Fu. Okay, oh, so okay. backstory. So when Bruce Lee after the Green Hornet finished, he wrote a TV series and he called it Kung Fu. All right, so now it was uh, about this one guy who comes from China and uses Kung Fu to, to do whatever, you know? Okay. Um, so apparently the original version was about a character coming from China and getting sucked up into the get to the gangster life. Those are the one version. And then the version that eventually became the Kung Fu show was kind of like the traveling Western guy who travels from town to town to town to like solve problems. Yeah. And that's what Kung Fu became. Um, so this show is based off the original idea that Bruce Lee had for the show Kung Fu and martial arts is heavy, heavy, heavy in this show. And once again, they don't, they don't present it as this magical mystical thing, you know, with like, you know, people glow in the dark or whatever, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just what these gangsters use to fight. You know, okay. and when you see the Irish people, when they fight, you see them use boxing. because That's what Irish people have a tendency to do. They did they use boxing. So you get to see all of this. And there are some politics mixed into the whole thing. But it's so intertwined with the main story and obstacles that that the characters have to go through. Like, it's not boring. There's no part that's boring. There's a couple of parts where you're like, shut up or like, keep going. Or I can't believe they did this. Like, you wind up talking in the screen, bro. Yeah. Like it is it is absolutely one of the best shows I've seen this decade. I I I, th I think we really have to mark this down in like history for the first time that Los has ever praised anything this much besides the Eternals. <laughs> you won't let that go. You won't let that go, will you? I will I would never let that go. I will I will literally carry that to the grave for sure. Um, okay, but you know what? I you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna get revenge on you and buy you a She-Hulk shirt. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be funny too. Um yeah. a Jay House Radio She-Hulk shirt. Um, but yeah, I'll I'm I'll definitely check it out. I'm a big fan of Bruce Lee. I'm a big fan of just you know Asian culture and martial arts. Like I, I well, love it, all that stuff. Here's the thing: you're a fan of uh Asian culture, you're a fan of kung fu movies, you're a kung fu of gangsters. You're you're uh, a fan of well written stories like that checks off every box for you. When I tell you you're gonna watch that first episode and get hooked, you're gonna get hooked. Listen, I'm I'm, I'm gonna watch it this weekend, and I'm gonna text you um, the number of chocolate bunnies I give the first episode to let you know how I like it. That's what we're gonna do, <laughs> bro. And there's only thirty episodes, so you could literally watch the whole thing in a weekend. Why is thirty episodes in one season? No, no, no. 10 episodes per season. There are three seasons. So there's oh, only 30 episodes total. Let's see. About to see. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot for one yeah. season. Um, interesting. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out, guys. Don't forget. Uh, what is this called again? Warriors? Warrior. Warrior. Definitely oh, check it out. Yes, that's my recommendation. What is yours? My recommendation is, of course, a horror movie, and it's called Talk to Me. Uh, have you heard about this one yet, Lopes? Talk no, never me. even heard about it. Uh, let me see if I can find the... IMBD synopsis real quick. Um, so based off of IMDb, it's a group of friends discovered who discover a a way to conjure spirits basically through a hand that they uh, touch. It's like a party trick. Oh, they, I've seen this trailer. You saw this trailer? I've yeah. seen the trailer, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a hand that they, they touch. Uh, it's a party trick that they use to conjure spirits. Um, I recently watched this uh, in theaters. It's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. It's a uh, indie film. I think it won some awards at the uh, film festival this year. Um, 
this is a a tough film to like there are some scenes in this film that's actually pretty tough to watch uh it's actually it's it's fun it's fun to watch but it's also tough to watch in, in certain aspects um but it's okay. how is it tough to watch um it's just some some of the gruesomeness that happens in this film can make you cringe a little bit you're like oh man like wow i might have to turn away for that one a little bit you know what i mean like like, there, like bloody like bloodiness people getting chopped up or just yeah like suspense? yeah like like well both like bloodiness suspense people getting chopped up like the, the movie makes you feel uncomfortable at least it did for me and i can handle a lot when it comes to horror movies but there were points in this movie that actually made me feel uncomfortable where i'm like what is happening right now so um in, a, in an era where like you said where horror films seem very samey and everybody's just doing the same thing and everything is predictable this is one of those movies where it's like it, it's not predictable it's it's really not. It's it's actually a fun movie to watch that kept that really kept me on the edge of my seat. Um it's it's by A24, which I feel like that studio is rocking on all cylinders right now with some of the films that, that, that they're putting out right now. Um I don't think they put out a bad film, not that I'm aware of. I, I don't think they have either. I've pretty much watched I think I could say most of their films, and I like pretty much all, all their films that they put out, honestly. So uh but yeah, if you're a horror fan, check out Talk to Me. It's it's it's, it's an awesome film, honestly. Uh, yeah, and my and my name in chat said that there is a twist at the end. Yeah, there is. Like you'll look at the like, it's I don't know. It's just it's so different. There is something that's so different about this film compared to like your typical horror movie. Um, there is, um, there is uh, what's the word that I'm looking for, like. You know how you watch a movie, and at the end of the movie, they have like a message that they're trying to give. It, it's 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 this film has a message that it gives at the end of it. I, I think it's fun. Check it out. I don't even. I'm not sure if it's still in theaters. It might be done done already. Um, I will tell you this much though. Like, um, if some if if I had any friends who were like, oh, here's the shit that's gonna possess you. I'd be like, I'm going home. Goodbye, guys. Later. Yeah. Gotta go. Bye. That, that's one thing I don't get. People people bring around these like weird things that deal with spirits like hey you want to conjure up spirits tonight while we drink some you know some beer and so on and so forth like no man where's the xbox or the playstation i'm not trying to conjure spirits like why no. do people want to do that i don't understand that you know i, I honestly think that the people who want to do that are people who are non-believers so they're like oh this would be fun because it's a joke but anyone who is a believer of like you know the spiritual stuff they're like uh-uh yeah yeah we yeah we know better we know better yeah. for sure <laughs> yeah so, but yeah, uh, check it out. Like I said, if you're a fan of horror movies, if you're a fan of suspense films, um, Talk to Me was actually a fun ride. Um, a lot of um, actors who are just making their break in this film, they did an amazing job. The acting is great. And the, the music is very eerie. It's, it's very is eerie. It? Like it, it, makes you, it makes you feel like it, it, it really puts you into the film. It, it's, it's, it's definitely a great film. Okay. Um, so yeah, or uh Legion and Chat says or the Ouija board. Yeah, same thing. Like why why do you want to mess with Ouija boards, man? Seriously. No. <laughs> um, other than that, guys. I had I had one ex-girlfriend who who would buy a Ouija board and he goes, Oh, I'm gonna play with this tonight. And I would burn that thing or I would get rid of that thing before like as soon as it came in, 10 minutes later, that thing was out the house. I was like, mm -mm, no, that is not saying in this house. I don't care. <laughs> yeah right seriously the power of christ compels you you know um, christ buddha allah whatever deed to you believe in mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly so um but yeah um that's our recommendations guys once again we appreciate you guys hanging out spending time with us tonight talking some ahsoka you know uh and everything else that we talked about tonight legion appreciate you my name Everybody who, who showed face in chat we had a lot of people come through tonight who, who hasn't been around in a while and uh yeah miss you guys. Yeah, Legion, man. We missed you, man. Thank God you're back. For sure, man. For sure. Um, so yeah. All right, Los, you want to say anything before we uh skedaddle? Uh don't forget to like, comment, and rate us five stars. It'll help get more eyes on us. Uh, we appreciate you guys for listening, watching, rating, uh, commenting, and uh, we hope you guys have a good time. And the next show, um, we're doing what, Blue Beetle, right? Uh yes, we're gonna do Blue Beetle. Um, yeah, Blue Beetle. If anything changes, we'll we'll definitely let you guys know for sure. Yeah, it's either Blue Beetle or we're gonna review seasons one and two of Star Wars: Strange New Worlds. Um, 
yeah, guys, be good. Uh, be safe. Don't forget to drink plenty of coffee. And uh, <laughs> have a good one. Or juice. How about you, KJ? Yeah. Um, yeah, same thing. Honestly, you know, so support oh. us, man. What's oh, wait, up? and Dark Legion is correct. Um, in probably about three or four shows, we're gonna have to do the My Little Pony episode review. Oh, I can't wait for the the the, the pony podcast and the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been like really busy trying to get like all the other episodes up and running. That yeah, we, we kind of fell off with the Chocolate Bunny. I mean, with the My Little Pony episode, you're gonna yeah, get. We'll it. probably do it after after Star Trek. You're gonna get it, Legion. Don't worry, you're gonna get it. Um. But yeah, um, second everything thing that Lo said. On top of that, uh, just you know, like we, we really do appreciate you guys being there for us. Keep listening, keep uh, leaving those reviews, those thumbs up, those likes, and YouTube. If you guys are on YouTube right now, hit the like button. If you guys want to support us on Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash J House Radio. Support us, man. Then don't forget to check out our merch too. Our, our link to our merch is uh, in, in the link below. If you guys want to check out some some snippy. J House Radio t-shirts, man. And, and don't forget to tell your friends about the show and hopefully they'll like it and they'll listen. Or watch. <laughs> I swear sometimes we sound like an infomercial sometimes. It's kind of uh, fun. Unfortunately, <laughs> that, that is part of the business of doing a podcast. Exactly. Where, where, where you have to, you know, do the call to action. You know, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, you know, play yeah. another, whatever it takes. Email, you know, send me a postcard, whatever. Smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> Pin pal me. All that stuff. All right, guys, we're out of here, man. Peace and take your grease. Later. Later.